Um, GraphQL, the very first thing that we want is to add that GraphQL dependency into our project itself. There should be GraphQL. Here we go. So there's actually a um, Kickstarter dependency that we've got here. So we bring in the GraphQL Java tools, um, Spring Boot Starter, so a classic Spring Boot package there. Some of our additional little dependencies in here, so Altair, um, Graphy, QL, and Voyager are some of the development tools and development interfaces that we add on top, um, and that's all they are. Once this has been added to our dependencies, what it actually lets us do is it creates, it, it gets that controller for us. So rather than having to create an actual GraphQL controller now to pass on to our GraphQL services with our schemas and whatnot, that's actually created for us. So that's transparent. So under controllers, we don't have anything for GraphQL at all. Um, what, what is then defined, of course, is our security security configuration. We need to actually allow the GraphQL to play ball. Um, so inside security configuration under config, security and security config. Right at the top, we open up in our authentication whitelist, our development tools here. So while these are running, we want to be able to access them. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to have to set up some sort of fancy portal to access our Voyager, Altair, and GraphQL. The same with our Swagger. Uh, going down, I believe, here we go. So anonymous post white list here, we've got the GraphQL controller endpoint. So the reason this has been opened up here as a whitelisted item, we don't, GraphQL controller, we don't have any control over that because that is supplied by that dependency. What we do instead is we manage our security on the services themselves to stop anyone from gaining any unnecessary access. So once that's opened up, we can access our controller. We've got, you noticed before, under GraphQL and resources, we've got our actual GraphQL schemas. So this defines our types and the queries and mutations schemas. Um, pretty, pretty straight standard sort of GraphQL syntax there. But then underneath. And there's the create, update, and delete. Yep. yep. So you've got audit query types. You've got the actual query operation. So this is if you're using any sort of like search or um, filtering. You've got your mutations. I think this is probably not the most exciting schema to be looking at here. This is the default schema it's exciting that I think me. everything inherits from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's have a look at our fish schema. So here we go, we've got our fish here. So we've got our workflows that are attached to our fish because of the workflow behavior. Um, you've got our relationships, so species and tank. And then you've got our attributes all attached to our type, yeah. our schema type. In the and example then got in the article, we're, we're doing movies and categories and actors. So you just substitute fish with movie and you're there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly the same. We've got the fish input, which is a slightly different variation of our type uh, that allows different. This is actually the data structure of the JSON object that we're going to be sending down the wire. And then this is our queries here. So this is where we take into our inputs. So our queries and then our mutations. So the mutation is where we actually pass up our inputs. Mutations being the create and update and delete and query being the read. Perfect. So those are the uh, schemas. Um, then you found underneath with direct record or a package, GraphQL package, um, where we've got the GraphQL combiner. The GraphQL combiner here pulls in all of our uh, resolvers, yep. whether it be a mutation resolver or a query resolver. And then this just basically pulls in our schemas um, and binds them with the resolvers. So that's that's what this file does. We've got the error handler in here, which handles any sort of exception. This is your managed exception handling for the GraphQL controller. Um, and then underneath resolvers here, we've got, so we've got our queries and our mutations. So looking at a mutation here, so a fish again, you can bind, I might actually reopen up that fish schema. 
just to do a quick comparison to see what we're actually binding here. Underneath mutations, you've got to create, um, create all, update, update all, delete, and delete all. And if we have a look here, these are mapping to those schema. Um, these methods are mapping identically. So for every one, every mutation we have here, our mutation resolver will have a method that maps identically. And you can see the raw fish entity here is our fish input. And this returns a fish entity, which is what we're saying here as well. And then all this does, so we've got our, this is our security layer on top. So this only allows to, if you've got create access to the fish entity. And that's defined by the security diagram. And that, and that locks it down. That locks it down. Yeah. Um, then that we just pass it directly onto our service. Was it, sorry? Oh, that's awesome. That's really good. Um, I love it. The more yeah. I look at it, the clean architecture, the way that the bot writes that out, um, you explain it really well. So thank you, Pete, for taking us through that. And um, yeah, keep up the good work.